What's going on guys? Grab you a cup and let's chat for a second. So, first off, I'm using a brand new camera that my wife got me. I don't know how it's going to work. You guys get to be my guinea pigs. This is the first time trying it. So we'll see how it goes. I still have my old reliable standby uh, in case this one doesn't. Um, this one might do better for outdoor stuff. Um, my other one might be a little, a little better for here in the cave. But we shall see. So if things seem a little different or off, that's why. Um, just thought I would cover a couple of things here for you guys. Uh, first, <clears throat> just some video updates. Um, I still have got more planned on the loadout series. I have just been absolutely swamped. Hasn't let up from the other 1,500 times that I've told you all I've been swamped. Every weekend is either tied up with work for the business, work on the house, or work at the family retreat property or work of some kind fashion or another there's not much downtime in my life so trying to squeeze the videos in i everything else comes before that unfortunately and i have to get all that done then if there's time left over i can squeeze the videos in but i've got them on the list i'm getting things lined up i'm also waiting on a couple of things to get i got to get sorted that i'm changing so uh, those are coming um, got a few other things on the list I want to get to uh, some new stuff that I want to get to and I'm not going to tell you all about it I know that's rude but I don't want to start talking about it to you and then y'all get disappointed if it takes me six or eight months to ever get around to doing it so just know that I've got some stuff planned um, and go from there so that's just kind of a little bit of what's been going on. I've been trying to pump out gear for customers as quick as I can. And that's a sun up, sun down affair. Uh, so anyway, won't ramble on about that. The point of this video, I haven't touched on current affairs in a while, so it's kind of prudent that we do right now. Um, so still a lot going on, right? all kind of different fronts that we need to be paying attention to and watching and getting ready for. But there's a couple of really serious things that I want to touch on and hopefully you guys will, will are already following it and picking up on this. But in case you're not, folks, we are heading for some really dark times. I've said this before in other videos, there are divisions in this country right now that are so wide and so deep and so absolutely polar opposite of each other that it's like trying to connect two magnets the wrong way. There is literally physically no way, it's an impossibility, they will never fit and connect. No way it could happen. That's where we're at as a country right now. And I don't think that that many people actually understand the depth and scale and magnitude of where we're at right now. So I'll give you a little example, right? When the occupier of the White House, <clears throat> the current one, put out a tweet the other day that someone forwarded to me, and said, you know, here's the bottom line, and I'm paraphrasing, um, either get vaccinated or wear a mask the rest of your life. Choice is yours. Something to that effect. And I went and looked it up on Twitter. And first off, it's an absolute ludicrous thing for a sitting president to say 
because he doesn't get to make the rules, he doesn't get to make law, he doesn't get to tell the American people what they can and can't do. But what goes way, way deeper than that is not so much that statement. Which that statement alone should tell you a lot about where the people pulling the strings right now, the puppet masters, where they think they are power-wise. And that should greatly disturb you and concern you. But even more, even more so than that, I was reading all the comments. The comments were where the real valuable information and intel is found at. These are just everyday American people commenting on this. And there were probably three to one commenting that everybody that refuses to get vaccinated should be put in prison until they agree to. People that refuse to get vaccinated should be denied public and government services until they agreed to. Businesses should force people to show proof of vaccination before they allow them in their establishments or to do you know face-to-face -face business with them. It just went on and on and on like that. The things that people were calling for against their fellow citizens who may choose to not get vaccinated was absolutely unbelievable. No, stand corrected. It was absolutely appalling. It was very believable. I know that's where we're at right now. But it was absolutely appalling. This from the same crowd that loves to chant the mantra of my body, my choice. Their hypocrisy knows no bounds, rest assured. But the bigger, deeper picture that I want you to be looking at and thinking about here is these are other people in your country who vote, who affect the decision-making process, who want the government to punitively punish you up to and including kill you if you don't go along and get what they're wanting you to get. I'm not going to do a 45 minute video on this because if you can't figure out how dangerous that is, how bad that is, and how deep the division is that that kind of talk and mindset causes, I could talk forever and I'm not going to be able to truly open your eyes to it. You ought to just be able to hear that or read that and you ought to know. So there it is in a nutshell, right? It's, it's bad. Okay? Folks, we are divided in this country very, very deeply. You didn't think all the stuff that's gone on for the past year now, year plus, two years, divided us. This ought to really, really show you. Um, plenty of other things to be keeping tabs on. You've got things heated up over in the Middle East right now with Israel. Um, we just had a week of dealing with the big oil pipeline shutdown. And of course, the company paid a $5 million ransom to get their files back and everything back up and running. So expect lots more of that. They'll probably start seeing other companies get hit on a larger and more massive scale because now they just shown the world, and others have as well, you know, before them, they're not the first one, that doing such thing pays. So there are those who are going to want to do it to get the money. Oh, no, excuse me, because my allergies are making me want to sneeze.
Whew, excuse me, guys. Sorry. Disaster avoided. I almost sneezed right at the camera. <gasps> you might have caught a digital virus. <clears throat> anyway. <clears throat> so there's that. Um, just touching on the pipeline deal real quick. It's something funny that I found. <clears throat> people were upset. I saw this many places, even some from some people that I know. People that I know, not necessarily those that are part of my circle that I associate with. <clears throat> they were upset because people were going to the gas stations and filling up gas cans with gas. And somehow that made them greedy hoarders. Well, I propose this question in a free market, in a free country, if I've got the money and the means to go purchase something, how do we de define what makes me a greedy hoarder? What makes me greedy? If I can afford to go buy 50 gallons of gas in gas cans, because I've got the money and the cans and the capability to do it, why shouldn't I be allowed to? Why does that make me greedy? Why does that suddenly make me some evil person because I have the means and wherewithal to do that? The, the, the audacity of people, they get upset because there were gas shortages and they blame the people buying the extra gas and their you know, gas cans and stuff and not just in their vehicle for causing the shortage. No, the shortage got caused because we are on a just-in-time delivery system and the least little hiccup in that system will very quickly cause shortages. It happens at grocery stores, um, gas stations, all kind of different industries. It's nothing new. It's why we talk about being prepared all the time and being ready for things so that you're not caught in that situation because the just-in-time system that we use is so vulnerable and the least little hiccup in the system can throw huge glitches and monkey wrenches into it. But these same people, I know for a fact because I've seen them and heard them say it, they're against people buying all of this extra gas, for example, but they also preach and complain about businesses price gouging and they want the government to set limits on prices, especially in times of emergency. Well, hello, McFly. Businesses are scared of getting in trouble right now because of all this anti-price gouging rhetoric and some states have even passed laws. So they can't do anything. If you did away with all that nonsense, as some of us have explained in the past, and when you hit an emergency like that, if businesses jack their prices up because, you know, supply and demand economics 101 that you learned in ninth grade, the price goes up. Guess what happens to all those people buying all that extra gas? 100% guaranteed you're going to cut a huge chunk of them out. Now, there are still going to be those that are going to spend the money regardless of what it costs. They might have the money or they might not care about the cost. But there are a lot of people that if you raise that price up, wouldn't be buying all of that extra gas. They would just get the bare minimum that they required to run their vehicle or whatever, and that's it. They wouldn't get any more, which would increase the supply that was available, meaning there would be some for you to get. The flip side is you got to be ready to pay that extra price. But the price raising stabilizes the demand, so it may at least makes some available. So that if you do need some, you can get it. It might cost you more, but you get it. So again, hypocrisy rears its ugly head. These people are against the price gouging, which, again, price gouging does not exist in the United States. In our economy, there is no such thing as price gouging. Okay? It, it, it's a fake, made-up, bogus term. Get that through your heads if you're one of the ones that don't understand that. <clears throat> there is supply, there is demand. In the free market, those are the only two things that dictate prices. Period. End of discussion. So, 
don't scream about people buying up something, such as the gas, when you won't let the market do its thing and help to automatically regulate it. That's the beauty of the free market. Doesn't mean you're going to like it, but it works. So, another point on that same topic, because a little bit of a rant there. Sorry, not sorry. Um, pay attention to how quickly and how easily the gas ran out. Extend that to other things. Food. How quickly do you think food's going to run out if something happens to disrupt the, the, the just-in-time supply system? Look at how panicky some people got. Now think about those same people. Here. Look at how panicky some people got when they knew there was going to be gas. Stations might have been out a day or two, but there was gas being brought in. It was rattled on trucks from other locations. It just took a little longer to get there. So there were some temporary shortages. They knew that the pipeline was going to come back up at some point, some way, somehow, whether it was a week, a month, whatever. It was going to get back up. And some people still panicked. Now think about something happening where people don't know when or if something's going to get restored. Think about a large-scale power outage. Think of somebody went in, as I've mentioned before and we've discussed, flips the switch on the power grid and takes it out indefinitely. Think about how quickly people are going to get panicky and how stupid they're going to get and how fast they're going to reach that level of stupidity. What else can I say? All right, that's about enough for this one. I think we can keep going on this forever, but y'all get the idea. The remedy to this is be prepared, be ready, be trained. You get all that stuff together, and then you're not one of the ones panicking. And you're not overly worried about people panicking because you're squared away. And if they get stupid to try to come get yours, you're ready to take care of what you got. And you don't have to live in a state of worry and concern. You're good to go. So, as always, guys, get prepared. Get trained. Practice. And just be ready. I mean, I don't know, I'm trying to think of some eloquent way to put it, but I'm not exactly an eloquent guy, so there you go. Y'all take care. Keep paying attention. I'll see you in the next one.